Please welcome on stage Daniel Lienert and Sebastian Helsle. There's still, still some people coming in. Take a seat. So, uh, we will start. Our talk is about uh, search with NEOS, and it's called uh, Search as Main Navigation, because uh, we want to show you how to build a search in NEOS, which is such great uh, that you might um, skip your main navigation and only use that search. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm a Scrum Master at Punkti in Karlsruhe and I'm also a core team member. My name is Sebastian. Uh, I'm a product owner at Punkti in Karlsruhe and also a Neos core team member. So uh, we will talk about uh, today about the motivation why we integrated a cool search or made a cool search and why you also want to do it to motivate you. And we will discuss the basics, how is the search uh, working, what do you need, how to set it up, the indexing, how can you get your content into the search index, the searching itself, what you can search, how you can search, and the uh, result rendering, what appears after you search, how does it look, uh, live search while you type, and also a loud outlook to the future. So for the motivation, like Wolverine, this uh, talk also has an origin story. Um, two years ago, a customer wanted from me that I integrate a search into a Neos website. At the time, because uh, I knew a lot of projects which had trouble with uh, Solar and another CMS, I was a bit... <laughs> I was a bit scared, so, um, but I saw that there are different ways of doing a search, so I used the simple search at the time, tuned it a bit, and it was fine for going live and for the initial requirements. A year later, uh, the customer asked again, hey, I want something like Google, and please do that. So I, <laughs> I looked into Elasticsearch because everybody said, including Daniel, this is so awesome, this is so easy, just do it. And it took me two days to get a search running, which was already much better than the previous search. Um, Elasticsearch was at the time also you could just like replace simple search, so I didn't have to reconfigure that much. And when I had the search running and I wanted to start with the cool features like the auto completions and so on, I uh, realized that the search plugin that's out there is not doing so well yet. So I started working on that, and uh, a few days later, I also had. Um, a really nice uh, live search for the customer, auto completions, and so on. And I was so inspired by that and um, loved how easy it was also to add other things after the customer's feedback came in that I continued working on that, um, uh, re uh, improved the search plugin. At the last bar camp in autumn, I already showed a bit of that. And since then, we were continuing working on that, also adapting it for the new Neos. And now, showing uh, the most recent version, which just we finished like a week ago. <laughs> yeah. So the problem in the past was customizing was expensive. Results were not the ones that the customer expected. Anal but analytics always showed that the people who search stay on the website much, much longer, like by factor 10. And we wanted to, and we didn't like that the search was hidden in the corner because after I realized how awesome it is with Neos, why should it be hidden in the corner if you can just put it in the center? And I wanted to show the customers that I wanted to make them feel like I feel, so I had to work on it to improve it and also sell it, which shows the first results and uh, makes working with it so much nicer. So. A big motivation should be increase user interaction, because if the user searches, he has good results, he finds what he's looking for, he stays on the site longer because he might find relevant other content because of the search, he stays longer and your customer or you or uh, the customer's customer makes more money, so it's good for the website. Optimize real users' workflows. 
people might get lost on, on the website, they don't know how to interact with the search, they are too, um, with the menu, there are too many levels or something like that. So you can maybe save some clicks there um, and direct them to what they actually look for. And with people who don't know how to search, there are even people who don't know exactly what to enter in Google, you might also want to uh, provide some hints uh, how to start in the beginning. Different users have different goals, like um, some users might just want to browse, like on Amazon, some might just want to f uh, find a pair of socks, or if it's like a sales rep representative, he wants to find specific information when he's at the customer and needs some details. You should choose the right tools, Neos and uh, Elasticsearch are the right tool, um, and extend on that. Don't build or sell Google 2.0. A lot of customers might say that at some point, that they want something like Google. You can never do that because they spend billions and trillions of dollars on it and have tons of specialists, linguistic experts and everything on that. So just do what your customer, find out what your customer actually wants to achieve and try to do that. Have an ongoing feedback loop. Don't deliver a search and be done with it, except if the customer doesn't want to do anything anymore. But usually the first iteration of the search is not so good because you need user stories. You need to know or find out with the customer what are real people looking for, uh, have analytics for that, find that out, track that, and then improve the search after that. Because maybe a lot of people look for something important, but because of the configuration, uh, it's hard to find. Think about it early in the design process. Don't just add it later at some point, again in the corner, but really in the, um, discuss it with the designer and does it discuss it with the customer to have it in a prominent place so it has a value. Um, here's one example uh, where we did that. Uh, this is the home page, here's a banner, and then there's the search box, and in this case, uh, we provided some quick links which the customer can uh, modify because um, we found out in the research that there are several users or many users who are not so sure in the beginning what to look for. So if you just give them a box to enter something, they don't know the first letter they should put in there. So um, this way we can, both kinds of users can have a start on the website and don't run away. This is the search of the Elasticsearch website. It's a bit strange, it behaves a bit strange, but um, when you enter something, it shows you also like different groups of um, results. You can also add these groups to um, focus your search on a specific category. It also offers suggestions and uh, but no completions. And oops, oops. Uh, here's the Amazon search. If you search for Neos, you also get some hints. In this case, the category, which is quite important here because Neos soups, whatever that is, can be either food or hygiene, and you should find the right thing there. Uh, we also had a good example on Facebook, but somehow they changed it in the last days, so we <laughs> couldn't, yeah. So this is our search now on the website. So what you see there is you can, with the arrow um, um, on the keyboard, you can just switch between the, the results. First you have the completions and the suggestions, also grouped with little previews. And we think in many cases, maybe not with our own website, but this is something we wanted to show the customers, that in many cases you never have to actually visit the search result page. That is our goal, that you can just click what you need there and then have already what you want. Okay, before we start uh, to show you how to implement, uh, imp implement such a search, we want to give you some glossary uh, at this sort of search topic. Um, let's start with terms and phrases. A term in uh, the search logic um, is an exact value uh, that is entered into the search engine, uh, unanalyzed, and you can retrieve them, this word as you entered it there. Uh, while a phrase um, is a single word or a couple of words that is analyzed by the, by the search engine, and where every word in this phrase has its own meaning and its own um, uh, relevance, uh, depending on where, is it, where, is, where it is in the search phrase, 
and um, uh, what the context around this search word is. Then we have uh, this did you mean, which I have already seen in the video. Uh, a did you mean is a user comes uh, to the search page, uh, enters a search word which is not spelled correctly, and it sends the search, and the search comes back, and it says to you, okay, this one is, uh, is uh, spelled incorrectly. It, uh, you, you typed in meos, but I guess you, you meant neos. And then it, it, the user can click on that word, and it searches again uh, by the right search word. And an iteration of that, I guess, um, are completions. Uh, completions, when a user enters something into the, the search word, uh, in the search bar, um, the search engine automatically completes this word to correct search word. And it not only can complete um, some, some characters to complete word, but also sets this word into a context of other words that are around in the search hits. Um, that has two advantages. The first one is that the user sends a search word that it gets hits for it, and that results in happier users. And also, uh, the search result page doesn't uh, have to be rendered so much, so it also reduces load on the service. And then we have suggestions. Um, suggestions are um, snippets, basically, as you've seen it. Uh, you can put a link into it to a real a uh, search hit or document, and you can uh, enrich that with other information like groups or a thumbnail or something like that. Then we come to aggregation and facets. Um, normally, in the search world, it's all about um, getting a subset of documents by a search word. But an aggregation um, is meant for um, summarizing all the documents you have um, under a given property. Uh, you get as result um, for aggregation, you get a, 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 as result a list uh, of a property with all their values and, and how many documents uh, this value occurs. For example, uh, we've seen that we have uh, uh, um, aggregates uh, on node types and we get all the node types we have and how many of the node types we have. And then we can, build, we can use this list uh, to build a facet. A facet is a filter. Um, you can build facets on multiple dimensions of properties, and you can use this facet to narrow down the search results to something the user really wants to have. Yeah, and then we have boosting and weights. Um, on your side, you have different uh, parts of text, and you have normal text, and you have uh, titles, and you, you want to... Uh, make the search engine know that the title weights more, uh, that the, the words in the title are more important than the words in the text field. And that is done, with, uh, that is done uh, in our implementation at index time with boosting and weights. Yeah, for building uh, a search in Neos, uh, we have several building blocks. Uh, the major one, I guess, um, is Elasticsearch itself. Uh, Elasticsearch, um, for the people who, doesn't, uh, are who are unfamiliar with it, uh, is an open source search engine. It's document based. Uh, it's, based it's based on Apache Lucene, like Solar is. Um, it's uh, uh, highly scalable and distributed. And it offers a REST, a REST service uh, to index and request uh, search results. And the document the document-based thing and the REST thing makes it really perfect, uh, perfect uh, uh, to work with, with Neos and with the content repository. That is really great. And then we have a bunch of uh, packages that you will need to build a search. Um, they all um, cover different use, uh, use cases. Um, we have the Flowpack search plugin. It's the front-end plugin. It uh, offers a plugin uh, to integrate on the page uh, with the search field and also handles uh, the search result rendering. And uh, with the next release, um, it also offers a controller for real-time auto-completion and for suggestions. And then we have 
the Flowpack Elasticsearch Content Repository Adapter, um, which um, does the indexing from uh, um, documents from the content repository to Elasticsearch documents. And also implements the search eel helper to compile search, uh, uh, search code written in eel uh, to search query against Elasticsearch. And with a rewrite uh, we have done earlier this year um, and introduced the driver concept, which uh, mostly Dominique Deft has done, we can now support Elasticsearch versions 1 and 2 um, simultaneously. It's just a configuration option. Then we have the nearest content repository search, um, which provides the indexing eel helper uh, with some uh, in the, uh, convenient indexing methods, and also an abstract search helper interface, uh, which is then implemented by the content repository adapter. And last but not least, uh, Flowpack Elasticsearch, uh, which makes uh, communication with Elasticsearch available in Flow and also provides low-level API to the REST service of Elasticsearch. Okay, um, who of you run a project with Elasticsearch? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's cool, that's uh, um, really most of you. Um, yeah, I, w I want uh, to say again that it is really easy uh, to use this tool. Um, for every uh, Linux or Unix-based machine, it's just downloading, uh, at least for testing, just downloading um, the package, unzip the package, run the, run the thing, and you have an up-and-running uh, search server, which you can use right away. Um, there is some configuration that needs to be done uh, to make it available or to make it work with full-text search in Neos, but this is just one line of uh, configuration code uh, which enables the groovy scripting inline that we need for, for the indexing. Okay, I will talk a bit about how to index uh, nodes and content. Um, the basic index configuration, what you need, is already provided by the packages. Um, also, like the six packages that you saw, you don't have to configure or inst install them individually. Usually, you only have to install one or two, and the others get also installed. They will all configure each other. So at the end, you only have to add on the top a bit of your own configuration, your site package, for example. There's the um, Neos uh, content repository search package. It provides the defaults for the content repository to make the different um, property types that Neos has. Um, configures how they can be indexed, should be indexed. Um, then the Elasticsearch package um, has the configuration how Elasticsearch should treat them. And the search plugin adds good defaults, how the most common properties, for example, if you have the standard Neos installation at the node types package, then most of the content is already indexed with the default configuration, like title and text properties. Um, many use cases don't need any extra configuration. Uh, you get a search which works. Um, for node types, the package stack already uh, provides uh, a lot of defaults. You can add custom configurations or extend the ones that are there or override them like you already learned this morning with the whole override topic. And the best practice is to use Give me a second <laughs> to use mix-ins. That means you define, um, like if you have a 10 node types with similar properties or the same, you define a mix-in, how to index those, and then just all the node types should inherit from that mix-in instead of defining it for every node type. Here you see an example how we index our employee element. You saw that in a short video or the screenshot where, where um, I searched for Daniel. Um, the first part here is the, to define the employee as a full text root. Um, I'm always a bit confused because um, what it is means is actually that it only says the employee can be found as a search result. Usually only pages are defined as search results. Um, but in this case, we also wanted to have the employees appear. Usually, the, the full text root is like a container for all its children, all the content that is um, under there. 
like page content and so on. So um, the next part is using the mix-ins, the suggestible and autocompletable mix-in we provide in the uh, new search plugin release. Um, those two just say this type of node is used as a sort source for hints in the autocompletion and the suggestion list. Now we can also override those properties, like the internal field suggestions. Here we say how to index it. In the future, we want to make this a bit easier to read. But currently, it, um, here we use long eel, uh, eel function, where we say what should be indexed for the suggestion. For the suggestion, we want to have the little HTML preview and more information. So we tell it to index the property name of the employee, because the employee doesn't have a title. We also want a node identifier to create a link. And we use a little uh, rendering helper to create the little HTML snippet, which we store in Elasticsearch. Um, we can define our own uh, fusion path, which should render the different types of content. And the 100 here at the end is just like um, how important the result should be for the search. For the completion, um, we tell it, we override the default indexing and tell it to index name instead of also title. So this is mostly all you need. In this case, this is a bit more, but here for the completion, this is easy. And for the, for the full text search, which is what happens actually when you press enter after you enter some letters, characters, and you go to the search result page, here we say that the name of the um, of the employee should appear in the, in the bucket H1. Um, for Neos, there are several buckets defined by default for different type of headers for normal content, which is used also to um, set the priority for different types of content. For example, if you index normal content, HTML content, it is split into different buckets because the H1 um, HTML tag is more important than H2 and normal content. So you can also index assets. Here we didn't do so much yet, but it's also uh, not so hard. It requires a certain attachment type capability in Elasticsearch. It's already provided in versions um, up uh, to one and up. And for 1.7, you need to install a plugin separately, which is quite easy. You only have to run this command. To set up the indexing configuration, you can extend the default configuration, override it in your settings, and add the configuration for single assets or asset lists, and then they are also indexed. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, when the uh, index is set and uh, set up and filled, we can actually do the search. And the next slides will show you how uh, to build a search and how easy it is uh, to integrate a search into your website. Okay, let's start uh, with a really simple case. Uh, we have a search form and we have a field where you can enter your search word and then you submit the form and the search word uh, is sent to Neos and we have it available in Fusion. In this case, uh, it's just this line of Fusion code uh, to get this search term and uh, do a full text search using the search, uh, the search eel helper and the query method to do a full text search on the complete index. And uh, you get back a list of the search hits. And not only the hits, they are already converted in nodes. So you can use them node, these nodes to render the search results as you like. Uh, for example, you can add a headline. Uh, you have um, little teaser text. and you can also um, render a breadcrumb or something like that. Um, using the search plugin, it's also really um, easy to render every document type you find differently. For example, if you have a, a search hit in a blog article, you could uh, display um, the header image as a thumbnail. Or in our case, uh, for a case study, you could display the logo of the, of the customer and other things. And this is done uh, using the, a logic in the um, search plugin. 
And uh, this is really smart because um, it looks for a prototype uh, that begins with the name of the document, with the document name, and should end with search result. There is one default um, prototype, the NEOS NEOS document search result, which is used whenever the plugin doesn't find anything other suitable. Oops. Ah. So, um, so all, all you have to do if you want to um, define your own custom rendering is add a new prototype, uh, for example, for vendor site case study search result, and there you can exchange the template or do whatever you want with the node object you get into it. Okay. Um, second, facets. Um, as I said earlier, for facets, we need a list, a list of aggregations. And we can retrieve that aggregation uh, together with the search result by just adding a field-based aggregation to our base query. In our case here, um, we aggregate by the, the node type. Uh, so we build up a new aggregation types on node type, and we get back these aggregations, and in the buckets, we get the different, uh, different value that this property has. We can then render uh, such a list um, easily using Fluid. Uh, we render a link where we send the or original search term uh, together with the type for filtering. And then uh, we can use uh, this request argument type uh, to add a query filter, a term query filter, on the type field. That makes it possible to narrow down the search uh, results by a given field, in this case for the node type, uh, but um, any other facets, any other pr um, property of your document is possible. Highlighting um, is activated by default um, with the search plugin, so you get a result back where the um, search word is already highlighted in the text. But if you want to customize that, um, you uh, can do that with the highlighting, with the highlight method, and you can set a value of characters that you want to have um, in front and the back um, of the search word, and how many of these highlighting snippets you want to get back. It's easy like this. And for the did you mean feature, there is a new uh, search result helper. And so the one thing you have to do is to have the search result helper uh, dot did you mean and give the original search query and it uh, gives you back uh, one or several words uh, that, uh, that that is the result of the did you mean uh, function of Elasticsearch. So for live search. Um, that means you type and it shows you the auto-completion suggestions on these kinds of things. So first for the auto-completions, um, they look like that. You get um, several possibilities, options you can choose from um, to, to complete what you look for. In Google you sometimes get really funny results for that. Um, you can configure this also very precisely. We didn't show you this configuration, how to do the auto-completion in detail and so on, So because that would be a bit too much. The normal configuration is also quite good. But for example, you can also say you only want to um, show the completion for a word or uh, how many words, for example. Um, yeah, word and phrase completions like Google does. Um, it helps you a bit when you're unsure about spelling. You can enter the first few letters and then you see something like that. Um, it's very fast. Elasticsearch returns the results almost instantly because it doesn't do a lot with it, actually. Um, there's no correction. You have to, if you type letters and there's no completion for that, you don't get anything. And the reason for that and what's currently missing in this implementation, Elasticsearch has a lot of features, so this is one of it. Um, you can also do the completions in a different way, but this is the, the normal way. It doesn't respect your context, so it doesn't know anything about dimensions, it doesn't know anything about languages, and 
you might, if you select one of those options and press enter, you might not get any result on the result page. Because, for example, you're in the wrong language and the completion is for French and you're currently in German, so you don't get anything. And it's not easy to remove that from that, only if we split the index for the languages. Um, and you cannot say that uh, when indexing that something is more important than something else. For suggestions, this is much better. Um, here we have fuzzy search, that means you can uh, mistype, it can, you can set up, uh, configure how many corrections it should do, or it can do. Um, it respects the search context, that's something um, uh, I improved last year, and we um, continued working on that. Um, it knows what dimension you are in, it knows what workspace you are in, and it also respects the starting point. That means if you have a subtree with a block and you have a search plugin there, um, you can just configure that it only searches um, in the block tree. So this is of course slower because it has to reconstruct the context, it has to um, a more complicated search because of the fuzzy search, and um, Daniel improved that a lot uh, in the last few weeks uh, for the search plugin. Uh, we cached uh, and pre-built the query and we cached the uh, context. So uh, wh while you type, it should be really fast and now it's like 10 times faster than before and it's almost instant now. Uh, it uh, supports the, the weighting, the boosting. You can um, also configure, like you saw in the other example, how important like the title should appear is more important for a suggestion than, for example, the content. It shows you alternative results, maybe that where Elasticsearch thinks they are a bit similar, but you wouldn't have uh, found them by yourself um, with the normal search. So here you get many possibilities, and you can also use those suggestions uh, on a page. Instead of searching, you can, for example, in a sidebar, always uh, show relevant content based on the keywords for, of a page, for example. We didn't implement that, but that would, of course, be a next step, for example. You can completely customize the payload. You have to be a bit careful with that. Um, at one point, we, the, our index exploded because we just put too much stuff in there. Um, so in this case, for every um, node that we index, we index um, like two lines of HTML, which are stored in Elasticsearch, and we get them back when we query for the suggestions via JavaScript. And we can just render it. We don't have to uh, run it through PHP, or we don't have to, and we don't have to do templating in JavaScript. We can just output it. You can do type-based suggestions because of the customizable payload, which is like an array. We can also store the the type of the uh, result, and then group those results like here. And as I said, the pre-rendered output. Or for example, you can also add more information like uh, direct links. We also use that here, so when you click it, you go directly to the, to the page itself. And yeah, you can add any kind of information that you want. Okay, um, I guess there's pretty much you can do um, till now with the search in years. And um, yeah, there are some future plans and future thoughts. Um, what we want to have in the future. Um, one thing um, definitely is the driver of Elasticsearch 5x. Um, I guess that's a lot, uh, a lot work to do, but with our new driver concept, um, it's definitely possible to support 1, 2, and version 5 of Elasticsearch. Um, we need to support uh, multiple indices. Uh, currently, uh, all the data from all pages are, uh, st is stored in the same index. This is okay because we have a root uh, for searching, but as Sebastian said, uh, for some uh, functions in Elasticsearch, like the autocompletion, um, we have no context, so um, uh, sometimes we get weird uh, results, uh, so we have to split that up. Um, we need some better support for language specialties. Uh, there is some support already, um, but we have to make that easier to support different languages, also languages uh, that are not so similar to German or English, for example. 
Um, we need some idea for index queue. That means for um, for real-time index, we, we need a solution that real-time index doesn't slow down the um, the editing of content. And as always, uh, we improve the doc we have to improve the documentation, and uh, we should build example library. Um, if you uh, most of you raise the hand. Uh, when it comes uh, to the Elasticsearch usage. If you want to help with that, uh, just uh, join us in the Guild Search in Slack. And um, yeah, we, we appreciate every pull request or every good idea to improve things. So if you also want to have a cooler search like we have, at least we think we have, um, oops. Uh, you should check out the, the packages on, on GitHub. Uh, you should post feedback and ideas. You can also get in contact with us directly because uh, the search plugin, for example, we, we added all these cool completions and so on, but the JavaScript part is, of course, not in there, but uh, we can also provide you with examples for that if you want that. Um, it's quite simple. And um, post your ideas, post your feedback, and use, for example, the SEO package also it, uh, and index the metadata there that improves the results a lot. And treat the internal search like the external search. So if, for example, if you don't want to have some pages not indexed for, of, by Google, then also don't index them uh, with your own search and so on. So they, they should be um, treated the same way. Are there any questions? Um, I have a question about asset indexing. You said that we can asset, uh, sorry, index the assets from Type of Three Media, and I wanted to ask whether uh, or not you also have a concept of indexing only assets that are in use by content. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, as I said, uh, we haven't um, worked so much with that. Uh, just tried it out and hadn't that use case yet, um, okay. but. I guess we figure something out. Okay, thanks. <laughs> More question? No, no question. Okay. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you.